Word problems are often the bane of many students' existence when it comes to dealing in mathematics. Unfortunately, they're also kind of the whole point. There isn't a whole lot of uh, real-life reason just to go around calculating bare numbers in your head for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> so getting good at word problems kind of makes math a lot more useful and uh, kind of gives you a reason to learn it in the first place. One of the best ways to figure how to take the information from a word problem and putting it into an equation that makes sense and that you can actually calculate is using a problem-solving plan. The problem-solving plan that we're going to work with has four steps. First, understand the information. Second, devise a plan or translate the information from word problem to number format. Three, solve that number format. And then four, check your answer. This question says, we're going to arrange tennis balls in triangular shapes. There's an image of it here. And we need to know how many balls there will be in a triangle that has eight rows. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we understand the question. Each time that we come up with a new stack of tennis balls, it's one layer deeper. And what we're looking for is how many tennis balls there would be total by the time we move on down this sort of list here and have a huge stack, eight tennis balls high, and all these little triangles of tennis, tennis balls in the middle. So we need to now is devise a, devise a plan to translate this information into numbers. If we sort of draw a chart here, we can see that with one layer, the pen that works, with one layer, we have one ball. With two layers, we have three balls. That's the one from the first one, and then two new ones. So this one's one plus two. In the third layer, we have six balls. Oops, sorry. Third layer, six balls. There we go. That's the three from the previous one, and then three new ones. So we can see a pattern going on here. Each time we add a new layer, we have the number of balls that were in the previous layer plus a number that's equal to the layer we're on. So if we were to go on to layer 4, the fourth layer, we have the six balls from the previous layer plus four more since we're in the fourth layer. It's going to give us 10 in layer 4. So now we have a, a plan that we can use. We can go on through and fill out the rest of this chart to figure out how many balls are going to be in the eighth row. So that would be the third step. So let's continue on through. If we have five, that's going to be ten plus five, or fifteen. Six rows would be fifteen plus six, that's twenty-one. Seven rows will be twenty-one plus seven, or 28, and 8 rows will be 28 plus 8, which is 36. So by our calculations, we should have 36 balls in the 8th row. Now if we go back and check and just make sure we had our, ha had our math right, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 6, 6 and 4 is 10, 10 and 5 is 15, 15 and 6 is 21, 21 and 7 is 28, and 28 and 8 is 36. Looks like we've got our math right. 36 in row 8 is going to be our answer.